Hey everyone, I'm Vin Ebenu here at Jenkinson's Aquarium in Point Pleasant Beach with Kerry Anderson, interpreter. And we're going to talk about sharks today, ruling out fact from myth and letting you know that you don't have to fear sharks every time you go into the water. Uh, Kerry, I know one of the, the biggest myths that comes from sharks are some of the stories that every time somebody walks into the water, whether it's into the ocean, a lake, or a river, that they're going to get bit by a shark right away. There's going to be some big shark attack, even though one hasn't happened here in New Jersey in a long time. But I think anybody who's just seen the movie Jaws <laughs> gets a little frightened when they go into the water. Uh, what is it about sharks that you think makes people fearful? I think that um, people are mostly afraid of what they don't know. We know more about space than we know about our own oceans. So just not knowing what's in there around you really gets people to put whatever they want to in their own brains. And as you said, like, you know, pop culture puts it in your head that, like, here's this really scary thing that could happen. But in reality, you're more likely to die by being struck by lightning, more likely to die by a vending machine falling on you. More people die every year trying to take a selfie than from a shark attack. And even to say attack, it's... Sharks don't have fingertips, and basically, if they can't see at a certain time, like anytime you can't see with goggles, the shark can't see in the ocean, they're going to try to figure out what something is, and unfortunately for us, they use their mouth to figure it out. When there is some sort of incident or run-in with a shark, typically the shark takes one bite and swims away. It doesn't come back like they show you again in the movies. But, you know, just like any other animal can go rogue, we do see that with sharks sometimes, unfortunately. When there is a shark attack, whether it's New Jersey or somewhere else, what is it? Does the shark like smell human flesh, or do they see anything? I don't know how good their their eyesight is. Is that they take a bite of that flesh and then they they swim away? So why? What is it? Are they attracted to humans in any kind of way? They're not. Not humans per se. So basically, sharks have the same sense as we have, and they're actually much better at sensing things in the water than us, for obvious reasons. That's where they live and have always lived. Uh, but the senses that they have that we don't help them detect if life is around. So they have pressure sensors on the side of their body that they can feel if there's any change in the water pressure around them. So if someone's splashing around, they think it's an injured animal, and they're going to go try to check out what that is. It's... Uh, they also have an electrical sense, which they have pores mostly concentrated towards their head. Uh, they're called the ampullae of Lorenzini, and they can determine if something is towards the end of its life. Because sharks, when it really comes down to it, they're super lazy. We call them opportunistic predators, and they're only going to go after the fish that are sick, injured, or dying. I always say, like, you have a piece of cake on a table in front of you and a piece of cake that your two-year-old brother's running around the yard with. You're going to go for the one on the table in front of you, and that's basically what sharks do. So they, they kind of sense when an in, animal in the ocean is injured or um, when they're swimming around the water, they sense when something is nearby. Is it more of uh, that they have to eat or is it kind of they sense something's going wrong? And are, are sharks protectors at all? Or do they like protect other animals in the ocean or other mammals? No, so sharks sharks are a keystone species, which when you say keystone species, it's something like uh, honeybees are a keystone species for us here on land. Without honeybees, we could lose all sorts of plant life and ecosystems will collapse. Same thing with sharks. There are keystone species in the water where if they're not there, populations will grow uncontrollably. Uh, illness will spread because sharks only go after the sick, injured, or dying fish. And basically, because these populations are overgrown, the smaller items on the food chain will disappear and it will completely just disrupt the entire ecosystem itself. So where they don't directly like protect each other, they're solitary animals most of the time. Uh, basically, they have two modes. They're either just swimming around for a few weeks at a time or they turn on the hunter mode and they go to hunt something that, again, is sick, injured, or dying, and that's about it. So they don't necessarily seek out healthy fish in the sea or any healthy mammals or people that they're just really kind of going after something that's sick or dying exactly yeah and, and again they have that electrical sense they can basically feel the same way when we get like an echocardiogram an ekg to see our heartbeat they do that essentially with their face with these pores on their skin they can sense how healthy or unhealthy an animal is and they decide that that's going to be easy for them to catch I know you said they're, they're a little lazy with collecting their food, but is there anything in, I guess, the, the mind of a shark or the, the embodiment of a shark that is somewhat smart in how they approach going after prey or how they approach their daily living? 
Well, yeah, so all different sharks have all different ways of living. There's right around 400 different species of sharks. They range in size from six inches, which is a dwarf lantern shark. They live in, like, the dark abyss, uh, to up to 60 feet, and that's the whale shark. And whale sharks, even though they're the largest shark in the world, they eat plankton, which is really, really small. They're, like, they're throw is actually only the size of like a quarter basically um other sharks like we have uh sand tiger sharks in our tank here they will typically swim around really slowly and if something comes close they might jump out and grab it um some sharks are ambush predators like we have wobbegongs here at the aquarium uh sometimes they're called carpet sharks they lay on the ground all the time if something brushes against their barbels which are like basically whiskers on their face they'll jump out and ambush it um some sharks are bottom dwellers, like our nurse sharks. They lay on the ground. If they find something they want, they can suck it up and, like, crush it towards the back of their mouth. So they all have different hunting strategies. Uh, the fastest shark, um, which is the fastest shark in the entire ocean, I think it's the fastest animal in the ocean, is a mako shark. Shortfin makos, they can uh, swim up to 42 miles per hour in the ocean. And so they're all going to have a different hunting strategy. And they're still, even that really fast shark... Its food is much faster, but it's only going to catch the slowest fish. So basically, you don't have to be the fastest fish in the ocean. You just have to be faster than the one closest to you, and you'll be fine anywhere near a shark. So there's as many similarities as there are differences between every one of the sharks and how they approach getting food and going about their day? Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, they, they're found in just about every inch of the ocean. Um, most of the species that we have here at the aquarium are coastal species. We'll call them sand sharks. They're all sharks that if you have been in the ocean here in New Jersey, you have been in the water with these sharks. There's a chance that they've been within, you know, a couple yards of you while you're swimming, and you have not even realized that that animal is there. What, what about the, I don't know if it's a fact or a myth of, you know, again, pop culture movies, you see a shark that all of a sudden smells blood and there's blood pouring in the ocean. I know in Jaws, you know, they're throwing buckets of blood and guts into the water to try to attract a shark. Do, are sharks attracted by blood or any injured animal or person? Do they sense that out? Do they have that really good sense of smell? They do. And again, it depends on the species. There are some species that are, you know, much better at smelling the same way there's some that are much better at seeing. And it, again, it depends on where they are in the ocean. Uh, the ones that hunt at night, the ones that live in darker waters, more murky water, they're going to depend more on their sense of smell. So yeah, they probably could smell about a drop of blood in a swimming pool's worth of water. And that is a signal to them that something is injured nearby. So that should be what's on their menu for the day. So would, what would your advice be to people going near sharks? Uh, I think there was a story, I believe, down near Australia recently of some girl trying to feed a shark and she had her f finger bitten off. Uh, is it recommended that people just stay clear of sharks, don't try to pet them, don't try to feed them, or are there sharks out there that are more friendly and you know won't attack you if you try to pet them? You really should never pet any wild animals. I mean, the same thing happens. Uh, I know there was something on YouTube a couple years ago where someone's feeding a sea lion and it grabs her and pulls her into the water. So even the animals that we like compare to dogs, which honestly sharks, some species have more of a dog personality than even like a sea lion. If you're feeding them, they're associating you with food, so they're thinking, okay, whatever is part of this thing, it's giving me food right now. That's why some shark species are actually starting to associate boats with food because they, you know, throw whatever fish they can't have back into the water. They may they might be like chumming the water for people to come and dive. Um, with the uh, incident in Australia, she's feeding a wild animal, and that animal is thinking it's getting some sort of food, and if you're not giving it the food fast enough, it's going to take action, basically. Um, with nurse sharks, their teeth, basically, they're like really flat, so they're almost like hammers. They typically will eat from the bottom of the ocean. They eat a lot of shellfish, so that's why it did crush her bone, and she knew she was in the wrong she like has apologized for that because animals in the wild they don't have humans in their ecosystem and we should try to keep it that way so the best is to say to observe and not disturb with any type of marine life how and i don't know if there's a difference between each shark but how far out into the ocean do sharks typically swim or, or roam I, I imagine it's not right off the shore right off the sand how typically how far out are sharks 
it again it depends on the species uh the ones that we have here we have sandbar sharks and as their name suggests they're pretty close inland they'd stay around the sandbars um i know towards the end of the summer we typically start seeing a lot of stingrays and they can be on the menu for sharks um great white sharks have even been seen in this area usually only like one at a time and they do come pretty close to shore pretty close to swimming waters uh, but they range very far out into the ocean they are one of the few species of sharks that can withstand different temperature changes pretty rapidly and so they really sharks live in just about every part of the ocean you can imagine what are some of the uh, the other interesting facts or unknown pieces of information about sharks that you think most people are unaware of, you know, when they when they think about a shark instead of being afraid of? What are some of the more interesting tidbits about sharks or some of the things that, some of the good things? So something that's like really cool about sharks, uh, they don't have bones for a skeleton. Instead, they have cartilage. So their entire skeleton is made up of cartilage, just like what's inside like our nose and our ears. So when people think, oh, we should use sharks for bone cancer research because they never get bone cancer. Well, they don't have bones, so they can't get bone cancer. Um, even their teeth, uh, they have rows and rows of teeth. So one individual shark can have 10,000 teeth in their lifetime. It's the only hard part of their body, and it's a modified scale. So it's the same way that fish will grow new scales and lose those from time to time. Same thing happens with the teeth of a shark. And then a shark's scales are actually microscopic teeth. And what's cool about that is they all basically face backwards. The teeth on their skin point towards their tail. And we use this in technology. It's been used for uh, racing boats and racing swimsuits. And it's such an effective aid in swimming that it's actually banned from international competition because the competitor basically would have zero turbulence against their body, the same way that you know a swimmer might shave their head or shave their arms and legs. They're having even less interaction with the water because of that shark skin technology. And so the same thing with the sharks. They, have, they spend almost no energy to swim because their skin it's so effective in letting them swim through the water. Talk to me about some of the sharks that we have in the tank here. Um, how often do they get fed a day? What are their typical activities during the day? I mean, do you, do you have to go in there and, and train them to do anything, or is it just kind of feeding and monitoring what they're doing? So we do monitor them all the time, uh, especially a few of our sharks have been like brushing up against the wall pretty frequently recently. Um, and But basically... They're doing what they would do out in the wild. They just let the current take them around. And in our tank, the case is that the current is a circle. Um, in the wild, the species that we have here, which are sand tiger sharks, sandbar sharks, and nurse sharks, those are all of our local species in this tank, they only eat about once every three weeks. So we feed them three times a week. They basically have a much slower digestive system than a mammal. So like our seals, we feed three times a day. They're mammals just like us. The monkeys eat three times a day. They're mammals just like us. But people are surprised to find out that our sharks eat three times a week, and sometimes they don't even like come up for us to feed them. They might only eat one or two pieces of food. Um, the training that we have with them is when we feed them, we have a really long pole, and we put it right in front of them. And so they know to come up to the tank when they can sense that there is like basically chum in the water. If we're a second too early, a second too late, the fish in this tank will take the food off the pole before the shark can. And there's no swimming with the sharks? Uh, not for the public, but we actually do swim in there once a week. We clean this tank. We go in with uh, it just like a net, like a regular net. Um, we have a plastic pole. We call it a shark be good stick. But basically what we do is, like, if the shark gets too close, we tap him on the nose. We're like, oh, just go away a little bit for right now. And basically that only happens. We go outside of the net to clean our big windows here. Um, but we are in there once a week and really... If they wanted to, they could breach that net pretty easily, and there's really no reason for them to do that. Um, some of our nurse sharks sometimes, they even like to like be really close to the net. They kind of actually want some sort of interaction because they're pretty social with each other. The nurse sharks, they lay on the ground most of the time. We kind of call it like a shark puddle because they all lay on top of each other too. And I know like from time to time, uh, they have been a shark that people have actually pet. Actually years ago we had a new shark in our touch tank so would i be able to get a one-on-one -on -one with one of these sharks um probably not the best we could do is through the glass because they really for the most part have want nothing to do with humans the closest you can get 
uh, to an interaction with the sharks is in our touch tank. When you first walk into the aquarium, we have this ray touch pool. And one of the species in there is called a banjo shark or a fiddler ray. It's like interchangeable. They're actually something called a guitar fish. And so a guitar fish is like an in-between of a ray and a shark. It's like, it's like a shark mullet. It's a ray in the front, shark in the back. And if you touch it, it feels like shark skin. You can feel those microscopic teeth on their skin. They kind of feel like sandpaper. Okay, thanks for sharing uh, some more info about sharks. That you don't have to be afraid every time you go into the water that sh you know sharks are dangerous. They're not, they're not coming after you. Um, and if you want to learn more about sharks, you can go visit Carrie and the staff here at Jenkinson's Aquarium in Point Pleasant Beach. And you can stand right next to the tank that I'm standing at. Carrie, thanks for the time. You're welcome. And for more on this, head over to WOBM.com. At Jenkinson's in Point Pleasant Beach, I'm Vin Ebenu.